I'm Steve for This Look With Cars, and today I'm with my Fiat 850 Sport Spider. Now, the last time you saw this car, it wasn't mine, and you didn't see it in my garage. This car was owned by my dad, and you saw this car in the tour of his garage. If you missed that video, you can click on this link up here. Last year, my dad was wanting to sell this car, and I decided that I wanted it for my collection, so I bought it from him. It had a few issues with it that I've already worked out. But now it looks like we have a major problem. Everything appears to be okay on this side, but if we walk around to this side of the car, next to the Porsche, you can see that there's a leak on the floor there. And it's not a small leak. And it's not coming from the Porsche. We all know that Italian cars leak oil, but typically they don't leak this much oil. Here in the engine bay, everything looks clean and dry. No signs of any oil leaks. No signs of any leaks of any kind. Let's check the oil. You can't even hardly see the oil, but it's wet up to right here. This is a max right here. And this is how far our oil is filled up. And typically there's only two ways to gain oil in a gas engine. That's either from coolant getting into the crankcase or from fuel getting into the crankcase. And I have a feeling this time it's not coolant. So what I think happened is the crankcase filled up with fuel causing the oil level to rise to a point that it's leaking out all over the floor. And that's why there's so much oil on the floor and the engine is still full of oil. And also why that oil is so clean that we can barely see it. So there's a couple ways how fuel can get into the crankcase. One is from the mechanical fuel pump down here. Looks like it's already been replaced and it's new. But as we all know, new parts for these old cars are sometimes not up to the best quality. And the other way fuel can get into the crankcase is from the carburetor. Figuring out which one of these is the culprit is going to take some experimentation. Let's turn the ignition on and see what the fuel gauge says. Gauge is not moving. So I wonder if we drained all of the fuel out of the tank. If we come back here and look at our fuel filter, looks like Pretty much all of the fuel has drained out of it. So I wonder if it siphoned all the fuel out and ended up inside the engine. I'm hoping that the problem is the fuel pump, so I'm going to remove that first. We do still have fuel in the gas tank and it will siphon itself out if I tip this down. So it's possible that the fuel reached the level of the fuel pump inside the engine and then it stopped siphoning. If that is the case, when I remove the fuel pump, we'll probably see fuel and oil come out of there. You missed it, but the fuel pump was full of fuel and dumped out all over the ground. And we do not have fuel coming out of the crankcase at this point. So our oil level is still below the fuel pump. Let's take the fuel pump over to the bench and see if we see any signs of this being bad. I'm going to make a mark between the two places so that I know where to clock it when I put it back together. So you can see this surface bolts to the engine and all the fuel has to do is get past this and then it can go down through here and then into the engine. I don't see any problems here with the seal, but maybe there is a slight leak in it that we just can't see. Or maybe the screws weren't tightened enough in the factory and it was allowing it to leak. Or 
There's a huge amount of fuel stored up in this area. Since I don't see a problem here, maybe we need to investigate the carburetor and see if that's the problem. been some time since the engine has cranked over so the carburetor looks very dry inside but it hasn't had fuel fed to it for a long time. Behind this cover is the fuel sender as well as the vent which goes back into the tank. Fuel comes out of the tank through this hose right here which goes down to the pump and then fuel can be returned to the tank through here. And this can keep vapor lock from being a problem on the carburetor, especially sitting directly above the engine like this. Let's take this line off and see if we have any fuel here. That's been on there a long time. Let's try my hose removal tool. Looks like it's working. There we go. No fuel here. Ended up popping the nipple out of the carburetor, but that's okay, we can fix that. Everything is disconnected from the carb now. I can unbolt it and take it over to the bench. Like most cars, your first two nuts to remove the carburetor are going to be on the top side, but on this side, they're on the bottom side. Let's take this over to the bench, take it apart, and see if we can find anything that is wrong. I'll need to disconnect the linkage to the choke here. Now we get our first good look at the float. Feels light, doesn't feel like there's any fuel in there. You really need to watch out on your floats today if you have any ethanol gas. It can easily get into some of these old brass floats as well as the new plastic ones if they are not made of the proper material. I'm going to blow in this side, plug this side with my hand, and then when I work the valve right here, it will tell me if the float is working properly or not. If the float valve is working correctly, it is shutting off the fuel. This hose is very old and needs replaced. Doesn't feel, well it is turning. It turns, but I don't think I'm going to be able to pull it off. Well, I broke it. But that's okay, this hose needed replaced anyways. This is pretty hard. I don't see any tears in it. Obviously it needs replaced, but it doesn't look like it was leaking. Well, I don't see any obvious problems of why this would have been leaking.
Again, I don't see any tears or any obvious places where this might be leaking. It is not as soft as it should be. Well, that might be more evidence that the carburetor was leaking. So why else would you have all this fuel here? You shouldn't really have fuel sitting in these cavities. Because there's no holes for the fuel to get there. The only way this could have happened is if fuel was leaking quite a bit out of the carb. Well, I've taken apart everything that I think concerns me. Everything else is just simple gaskets. And I haven't really found anything. But it's obvious that this needed a good cleaning. There's a bunch of residue from old gasoline in here. I'll get this all cleaned up. The carb is out of the ultrasonic cleaner. It's a lot cleaner now. Let's check the rebuild kit. So the rebuild kit was just a few gaskets, some O-rings, our float valve, and our accelerator pump. The rest of the parts that are specific to this exact carburetor need to be ordered separately. So here I have my other two diaphragms. Let's replace these guys. Now I just need to put all of this back together again. I did not get to the filter, which is here under this bolt. This might look like it's copper on the camera, but this actually is plastic. It's just a different color than the new one. I think that our flow is okay, but just to make sure that this can withstand new ethanol fuel, I'm going to put the new one in. So here's the new one. And I need to hang the new valve off of the new float, just like this one is. It has a little spring mechanism there. Just clips on like that. Now I need to replace the pipe that came out of here. It is still stuck to the hose, so I'm going to go get that. This is supposed to just be a press fit into here. I think that looks pretty good. Now we're done with the top of the carb. Well, that's not the right part. I'm still going to put this back together. See if the issue is solved.
now I just need to cut myself a new hose. Now I can take my last new gasket, which is going to go under here, put everything back on the car. I have everything back together now, but before I fire it up, I need to get all of the fuel and oil out of the engine. So let's take it over to the lift and see how much oil is really in this engine. I have the Fiat on the lift now, and I've placed a bucket below it. I've marked four quarts, which is how much oil this engine is supposed to have in it. We'll drain it into the bucket and we'll see how much gas and oil actually was inside that engine. I think you can tell by how that splashed that that does not have the viscosity of oil. We are over four quarts right now. We're probably somewhere around eight quarts. I'd say not quite half of this five gallon bucket. So probably around eight quarts of oil and fuel was inside that engine. Because the viscosity of this stuff is like water, I'm going to let this drain for a while and I'll come back. Now I'm going to remove the oil filter, which is actually on the end of the crankshaft. It's this aluminum section on the crank pulley. It's a centripetal type sludge trap. So as it spins, it takes all the contaminants and then traps them in chambers. I'm going to use my stubby socket and stubby ratchet to get that off. If I rotate the engine, I can easily get to the last two bolts. So I'm going to put it in gear and then push the car, which will rotate the engine. And here it is. This is the oil filter on a Fiat 850. As it spins around, it pulls the contaminants out to the side and only fresh oil goes back into the engine. Obviously, because we had fuel and oil inside the engine, this is pretty clean, but it was still worth taking a look at and draining all of the fuel out of the filter. I cleaned up the housing and the O-ring. The holes in this are not symmetric, so take note of this mark right here. This will only go on in one way. All the bolts are tightened. Now I can put oil back in the engine. I've put three quarts in. I'm going to check the oil now. Let's fire it up, see how far it goes down and then I'll add more if needed. My oil pressure light went off on the dashboard, but it does not look like we're getting any fuel yet. So I may need to prime the pump or possibly I do need to add more fuel. I pull off this fuel line going into the fuel pump. There isn't any fuel coming out of it now. Maybe 
when I took the fuel pump off the first time, the fuel that was coming out is what was left in the line. And the fuel tank actually did drain completely into the engine. So I'm going to add fuel into the tank and then see if we get fuel out of the pump. I've added fuel to the tank. Now let's see if we can get fuel up here to the filter. Looks like everything is working just fine. I don't see any leaks. Our oil pressure is looking good. It's idling a little high right now, but I do have the choke pulled. The fuel tank says that it is empty now, which is not true because I just put five gallons in. So we'll put that on the list of things to do in the future. Also, the ignition light is not going off, so I don't think the alternator is working. But a couple of electrical problems are to be expected when you own an Italian car. That's going to be it for today. I think the Fiat A50 is a beautiful car and I can't wait to sort out all of its problems so that I can drive it. So if you want to see me work on this Fiat 850 again, comment below and click subscribe.